Hello, my name is May Narrator, and my main job is to narrate this boy's life. His name is Joe Enriquez. He's a sad piece of unmotivated mess, and I mean that. And now, of course, he's going to pick up his phone, and he sees a snap. Crush. Of course, he goes for that right side pick, and he gets rejected. And of course, he's going to close his laptop, put it in his bag, zip it up, stand up, and look at that. I was going to go and continue his miserable life of being Jello Enriquez, and I mean that. So, I got a question for you. How do you not be like this sad, miserable Jello? Well, advertisement Jello, take it away. Have you ever felt sluggish or unproductive since the start of this quarantine? Or have you ever felt like your mental brain cells are just about to crumble up? Well, I got something just for you. Listen, enough, enough! But I want to do my commercial. Yes, I know you want to do your commercial, but let me finish the show off first. It's very important. And after that, you can do your commercial. Deal? Deal. Deal. I'm sorry. Anyways. Hello back to parents, students, and teachers. My name is Sean Enriquez, the host of this wonderful show, the Productive Part-Time Show! <laughs> and now, here are some of the people who I interviewed. There's only six of them, but let me tell you, there's more actually coming in. Anyways, I did not bribe them to be here. They wanted to be here, what kind of? And I want to show you some cool people right now! And the first person I'm showing you is... Sir Tommy Nguyen, his hobby is playing volleyball. He's quite a great guy and he's actually an AP student. And also, love the hair. Number two, we have Mr. Jackson Smythe. Look at his sunglasses. You think that's his hobby? No, 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 no. He's actually building Legos and he's also a BCA student. And another BCA student, sophomore, Mr. Mason Collins, or Sir Mason Collins, and his hobby is jump sets. Let me tell you, he gives you the good beats. Number four, we have Miss Brooke Fry. Her hobby is art, arts and crafts. She's a BCA student and a 4.0 student. We have Ariana Congo, which is also a, who's also a BCA student and, and a 4.0 student, and her hobby is exercising. I wish. And lastly, we have Mr. Malay. He's one of the teachers here in Blackman High School, and he's the boys' volleyball team coach, and he's quite a freaking spectacular guy. Every single one of these people might look different, and every single one of them might have a different vibe, but each one of them has one thing. And this thing, well, I already told you at the very beginning, and these things are... Hobbies. Thank you, main narrator. Um, my name is Expository Narrator, aka for some weird reason people at school call me the narrator that's very dramatic a lot. I don't understand that. Am I dramatic? I, I, am I dramatic? Anyways, uh, I've been asked here today to tell you how I got to my capstone project idea, and uh, let me tell you. It all started this one dreary day when I stepped my first foot into the sea of capstone. They asked us, asked us, what's your personal interest? What do you want to do your project on? What excites you? I didn't know. I didn't know. And I went crazy. I spent weeks trying to find something that excites me. Everybody had genetics, economics, businesses, health. Mine, I didn't know. I realized I had an idea, a light bulb that was really important to me. And I realized that people kept asking me what my, what my personal interests are. Why don't I make my hobby? Why don't I make my project about those personal interests, my hobbies? And how it affects people and how they work and how, they're, how productive they are. That's how I got to this. And I hope you enjoy the final product of my interest. Thank you. 
Well, thank you very much, expository narrator. Now, let's get down to the business. My cameraman is, uh, say hi, cameraman. Hola. So, first question. What's your dingly dangly name? My name is Tommy Nguyen. My name is Jackson Smythe. I'm Mason Collins. Um, my name is Ariel Cargo. Hi, I am Brooke Fry. Zane Johnson. Vino, Vino. St. Johnson, how's it going? My name's Hannah Litback. My name is Daniel Korleski. Oh, my name is Ashton Buckles. Hi, I'm Vicky Temple. I'm Alex Malay. What do you teach? I teach English here at Blackman High School. Second question, what grade are you in? Uh, I am a senior. I'm a senior. I'm a sophomore. Um, I'm a senior. I'm a senior. I'm in 12th grade. I'm a senior. I am a senior. I'm a sophomore. I'm a sophomore high school. Third question, what hobby do you have? My hobby is volleyball. I build Legos. Uh, I'm a drummer, I do drums all the time. It's pretty much all I do every day. Uh, my hobby is working out. Mostly arts and crafts, so I do a lot of like resin jewelry, uh, knitting, really just stuff that doesn't require, like, require a lot of like brain power, and I can just be like, oh wow, so pretty. <laughs> uh, I like making movies. I like uh, acting and stuff, so yeah. Okay. I like to collect little things from thrift shops. And I like to write. <laughs> I really enjoy running and hiking and just doing outdoorsy things. Um, that in and kayaking and anything with water, mountains, trails. <laughs> I, I like to play baseball and I also sing. I'm also in the Collegiate Academy. I go roller skating a lot. Uh, I mean, I play video games, outdoorsy stuff. Volleyball is a sport that I'm kind of on right now, but golf when I have the chance, um, hiking when I have the opportunity, all that kind of stuff. Fourth question, how often do you participate in your hobby? I do it every day. Pretty often. At least an hour every day. About five days a week. Normally I would do it like at least a couple times a week. I try to go 10 hours a week. Fifth question, this might be personal. How did the coronavirus pandemic affect you? The pandemic made me very sad because I had to stay home most of the time, but yeah. Uh, I'd say, it, not really physically, but definitely mentally and emotionally. I just, as you know, everyone had to stay inside. I couldn't be with the people that I enjoyed being with, nor could I participate in many of the things, such as music, that I occupied most of my time with. It wasn't more of an emotionally, but definitely like physically, because like normally for me, this is kind of a personal thing for me. I have a drum set at my house, and now because a lot of people are home, they have to hear me play drum set all day, every day. And sometimes I'll get like complaints from people. They're like, hey, can you like not play right now? So it's just, <laughs> it's kind of annoying personally, but you know, I understand that they're at their house, they're trying to do their job and stuff. So I'll, I usually let them do that now. I'll just kind of get like a practice pad or something. Well, the coronavirus, it really limited the amount of time that I could spend like outside and being active. So it did kind of make me sad sitting in my room in the darkness all day. Uh, it ruined me. <laughs> so <laughs> um, I lost my job. I got fired because of it. So that was really sad. But I immediately went and got a different job. And then I started working like 50 hour weeks. So I ended up having so much to do and no time to do it. So I ended up doing a lot of stuff. Overall, it's taken a pretty big toll on my mental health, but I'm working to overcome that and kind of learn from it, if that makes any sense. Uh, it affected me greatly. No, but seriously, uh, it actually postponed a lot of my plans, so I wasn't able to make anything. So I was gonna have a superhero movie and it just didn't happen. So um, me and Corona aren't tight right now. Um, I had little, I had little bowels of depression from time to time because I like being around people. Coronavirus, I don't really know how I feel anymore about the <laughs> coronavirus. So coronavirus really didn't affect me that much. Um, I followed the guidelines and kept a mask on when, where I was supposed to, but I was still able to go a lot of places and do a lot of things. Uh, I mean, the same way it's affected a lot of other people. Uh, I had a job that I was not able to go to when the virus hit. It was in the restaurant industry, so that kind of took a curtail. Uh, a lot of the sports uh, that I wanted to play, I could not because gyms would close down, so you couldn't go do that. Uh, and yeah, I mean, uh, video games were fine because that's all I could play, but, but yeah, it just kind of affected the ability to go out and do things in the same way that affected everybody else. How do your hobbies and personal interests help you get through that stage of the pandemic? Um, volleyball let me release some stress and got my, some of my anger out. I'd break out a Lego set and just 
could take a long time, you know, just occupy my time because you know we had that's a that was a commodity and. The quarantine was time, so that's what I used to pass the time. I get a sense of joy out of doing this. Like this is what I do all day, every day. Like I said, I, I absolutely love drums. I get, I get a lot of happiness out of it. So if I'm ever like feeling down throughout the pandemic or anything, you know, I'm always on the drum set, just trying to cheer myself up, getting my emotions out. That's pretty much how I do it. Okay. Okay. Nice. Because I was kept feeling a little sad during the pandemic, um, working out really helped with that because it releases endorphins, so it makes you happier just in general. So it was, uh, that was very helpful. I ran every day. Um, I got to go out to Colorado and hike and climb some mountains and run around and do a lot of neat things. Um, it really just it kept me calm where it was difficult. Does your hobby help with your school stress? That's a question. Yeah. Yes, it lets me get a lot of anger out. Yes, I think so. Uh, every so, every long weekend, I'll just break one out, spend the whole day on it. It's quite therapeutic, actually. Oh, definitely, yeah. Like, like I said previously with the pandemic, like I express my emotions through drum sets. So if I'm ever, if like if I'm ever just stressed about schoolwork, I like it, I'll just like take a time, just like maybe like half an hour and I'll just get on the drum set, just kind of relax my mind, to try to reset my mind so I can do better on my schoolwork. Being able to work out as much as I do like helps a lot because it just, like lifting weights kind of helps, it releases like all that pent up stress and anger from the school day and it just, I can get done and then, you know, be able to go to sleep at night very easily. They yeah. did because they provided an outlet for me to think of other things besides work and school and grades and capstone. Uh, so wait, what was, was, what was the last one? Uh, uh, capstone? <laughs> yeah. Oh, it keeps me going. It's, like, it's what I look forward to. It's why I wake up every morning. Dude, that's They're special. little escapisms. Um, when I'm not doing Miss Burks' work, I go to Goodwill and I collect little stuff. So it's just nice. So it really just, it was kind of just took my mind off things and um, right now I can't run and I'm more stressed than ever so I'm looking forward to the days where I can again so yeah. They do. It's good to leave school and go to the skating rink so I can just clear my head just focus on what I'm doing like with my feet how I'm moving. That helps a lot. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I mean everybody needs something to take their minds off it and for me that's I mean, being able to kick back up into it as, you know, gyms have opened up, as things have opened up and allowed for, you know, people to gather and, and do things together, that's been great. To do that, to get mind off of stress, and obviously the school year hasn't been easy on students or teachers, and so it's been nice to, to have that, as it were. Now that you've seen people's experiences with their own hobby and how anybody can have a hobby, how about statistics, concrete evidences that alludes to a relationship between hobbies and productivity? Well, I got something just for you. Through on my capstone project journey, I have found three important effects that hobbies have that yield better productivity. These three things are the effects of hobbies on time management, stress management, and health. Now, that may be hard to explain, so let me provide a few examples. Now imagine you're doing your work. You're doing great until you get bored or you're so stressed so you quote unquote chill. And so you go in that one app, Snapchat, Instagram, or whatever. If you're like 85% of the population, you're about to get sucked in like a black hole sucking in the lights of the world. You're going to lose track of all time, waste your time on pointless tappings until your parents somehow yell at you or you fall asleep. With hobbies, you can control that time. You can cut those unhealthy habits and start making healthy new ones. And with that, you can decrease your stress and can give you better sleep or make you happier, which is a better state of well-being. According to statistics, the happier you are, the more productive you are, which only makes sense. So, if you put all these together, better time management equals less stress, equals more sleep, equals happier, equals more productivity. There are more links that still result in more productivity, of course, but there are also simpler ones. Like for example, if your hobby is dancing, exercising, or sports, like Ariana and Tommy, studies show that those who participate in these hobbies have reduced heart rates and less likely to have physiological health problems. If you're more into music and the arts, the skills you learn in reading and playing music lead to the training of cognitive abilities. Listening to music that you love increases self-esteem and can even ramp up your social life. And drawing and painting improve memory and creativity. 
Even video games, which is considered by many their hobby, although it might sometimes be time consuming, is very beneficial with head eye coordination and lots more. Now compare this to watching TV mindlessly, hobbies surely do take the cake. Unlike TV, they have been shown to stimulate brain activity, foster confidence, and promote happiness, a big biomarker in health. However, after all of these have been said, everything leads to one thing, a better lifestyle, which, once again, ultimately leads to more productivity. Hobbies are diverse and anybody can have them, and each come with their own benefits. So, I come to you today to encourage you to participate in your hobbies and own who you are through them. I promise you, you will never regret it. Now that I've discussed everything I found on my research journey, that's pretty much What? There's a special guest? Oh my gosh, okay. Hold on a second, guys. Ugh. Hello, Productive Fun Time Show viewers. Today, I have a wonderful guest, and she, she shouldn't be here. She, she, she could just leave me right now, but she's coming here tonight, today, whatever, uh, to show all of you to some professional advice and professional mentor stuff. And she's my wonderful professional mentor. Please, I introduce to you, Miss Jody Diana. <laughs> Hello. Now, I um, thank you for coming. Now, uh, before I start this, please introduce yourself in the most elaborate manner just you want. My name is Jody Diana. I am a licensed clinical social worker here in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. I have a bachelor's in psychology, a master's in clinical social work, and right now I work in a private practice. I serve mostly college students with anxiety. I, did, I didn't even know that. That's wonderful. <laughs> now you know she's the she's real deal. She's the real best capstone, you know. Okay, anyways, uh, so I invited you here today to ask you a lot about hobbies and also about the coronavirus pandemic. I would like to ask you uh, the question, how has COVID affected you uh, or how you just your job, just overall, you physically, mentally, emotionally, and just how you do your job. Well, a, a great deal. I had a brick and mortar office on Church Street. I saw individual clients there. Um, uh, I, I see people in uh, 50 minute sessions throughout the week. And uh, because of confidentiality, I had to find a way to continue to serve clients. I had to um, stay home with children who had been sent home from school and so i moved my whole practice home i um, work in the corner of my bedroom now um i use um something similar to zoom to see all of my clients with it's a uh, it's a um a more um it's, it's hipaa compliant it's a more um secure network than zoom but um i still care carry the same schedule i had it's just instead of people coming to see me in person they see me in sessions just like you and i are talking to each other with right now um sometimes i've had to manage uh having children at home and between sessions running and checking if, if the school work is getting done that kind of thing um and the needs of my clients have increased they are struggling and therefore we have to address those things in their sessions oh well i'm sorry that you're getting more packed and once again thank you for being here the fact that you're here uh and connecting to that I, you already actually I was about to ask you have you noticed any increase in stress with who you work with or just in general even you know your family uh, friends and yes I mean, luckily my family no one we, none of us have been sick and I'm really grateful for that um, but my, as far as my clients uh, most of my college like I said are college students and so they've had to figure out how to navigate all the changes with how their classes are being run some of them went home unexpectedly they you know their living situations have changed their um, expectations for academics have changed so they brought all of that to the sessions and we worked through it um, uh, one thing I noticed um, in terms of since I work with mental health uh, a lot of people either were not taking medication because they found their symptoms manageable they began to take medication for the first time or some of my clients that were already on medication had to either increase dosage or add a second medication to help because their anxiety or their depression symptoms had increased so much. So um, most people are at a great place right now. They're all very stable, but a lot of people have had um, some struggles. And, and I've even noticed some cycles where everyone's having a hard week on the same week, even though none of my clients know each other, or they're having a hard week and I'm having a hard week that, that week personally too. So it's, it's come in waves. I just, Oh man, it's like, 
this is the reason why I really wanted to go and actually be in a psychological or whatever the professional field because I do want to help um, people like that but my parents you know, I'm Asian and they want me to they said there's no work and here you are helping people I don't really want to help people like that so thank you thank you so much sure. <laughs> uh, and finally which is probably the most important because you all want to hear this um, Lastly, have, have you, how have you utilized uh, hobbies or the formation of personal interests in, in your work? Oh, well, in my work, I would modify the word hobbies just a little bit. What I would usually refer to them in my work is either as self-care or coping skills. Um, so sometimes the hobby is as simple as being a reader or maybe they play tennis or a sport. And that is something that can meet a variety of needs for a person their physical needs mental emotional social you know sometimes a hobby is a group activity sometimes a hobby is a solo activity sometimes it helps kind of calm you bring uh, you know regulate your nervous system really provide um, some stability that when the world is kind of out of control then you can always bring yourself back to center with this comforting activity that you like to do um, and like I said like sometimes if that's that you need to kind of burn off some uh, some high stress and some extra energy you've got going out for the run or the soccer game or whatever it is that you like to do um, can help kind of give that a healthy outlet um, it can help distract honestly that's not always a bad thing sometimes we need to get our minds off of what's going on out there and just get back to something familiar so if that's knitting or um, I don't know uh, playing pool or whatever it is that you like you can get back to something that you can control over I'm going to work on this much of this quilt that I'm making or I'm going to try to shoot 50 baskets today just to you know work on my jump shot or whatever um, that will help you feel like you've got some control in an out of control world and the other thing the main thing I would mention is that it really helps people when they're struggling to feel competent and so if your hobby is something that you enjoy and you're good at it, or maybe your hobby is something that you're working to improve and you can see yourself get better and better, um, that can be really great for any of those struggles you've got in just your daily life because it can help you focus on something else. It can help you feel better. Your self-esteem might improve when you see that, oh, my golf score has gotten better. Or um, I'm, I'm trying to think, I should, should have thought of some other examples of um, usually my clients have uh, hobbies, things like going for a walk, meditating. Meditating is a big one in the mental health world, and it's very, very helpful in a time like this. Focusing on your breathing. Um, I would count making or even listening to music as, as really helpful hobbies because it can just be soothing, but also that sense of competency where, oh, I like this. I made myself happy. I'm pretty proud of myself. This was great. I was glad I did this. Like, I'm in a better mood now. So that's why hobbies have been important to my work. Thank you so much. That was so wonderful. Wow. You heard that? Okay. <laughs> uh, and actually, this is probably out of the script. I don't know. I don't, but I was going to ask you, do you have any hobbies of yourself? Or your, or your work has completely... Oh, well, I try to read, number one. And two, I have two elementary age kids. So my other hobby is getting their energy out. Like, <laughs> we've been cooped up a lot this year so we're getting outside a lot we've done a lot of family bike rides and I like to go on long walks too thank you so much that's wonderful oh my gosh I've said wonderful very very long anyways <laughs> okay I'm stuttering and that is it for this interview portion thank you so much thank you so much for coming uh sure and uh yeah <laughs> yeah I want to see the finished product when you're done if you don't mind of course of course okay see ya Thank you so much for watching my capstone documentary. I know it was long. I hope you didn't fall asleep, but seriously, I appreciate for you coming here right now and watching it. And I really worked hard for it. But there's one last question that I need to answer. And that is, what is my dang freaking hobby? And guess what? You've been watching it this whole entire time. Filmmaking, yeah, I love filmmaking. Filmmaking is one of my favorite freaking things to do. And also number two, you got to see my acting. Number three, you're, you got to see my speech skills, my interview skills, and also, you're about to see it. There's a song at the very end, it's my outro. And I'm telling you this right now, that me, who has, well, I have a 31 in the ACT and a 4.0 GPA, even I have a hobby. And if you're watching this right now and you're a parent of one of the Blackburn students, you know dang well that I am the literal, like, what's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up?
What's up? What's up? What's up? So don't ever tell your children that hobbies are just a waste of your time and that it's just going to rot your brain and it's not going to cause you productivity because I promise you, it is the only reason why I have a 4.0. At least in my own opinion. And I think some people will also say that. Work-life balance, baby. Work-life balance, baby. Anyways, thank you so much for watching and I cannot wait for the next video if you want to stick around. Well, this isn't a series, but it's been nice. See you guys later. Jill Enriquez, out. I said out, cut it, cut it. One, two, one, two, three, four. Thank you for coming to my show today. Thank you, I appreciate you mate. I promise I just wanna show you how Hobbies can make your wet and praise go wow Sports or instruments, no matter what it is, whatever skillfulness, you gotta run your productivity, increase miles and miles of the list with so much blissfulness. Hola. Let's look. <laughs> a Jay and Patel. What grade are you in? I'm a senior. And what's your hobby? My hobby is sleeping. Wow. And now, I'm wet age of the pandemic, you know? Why did I say you know? Yeah. What's your, uh, your hobby? <laughs> oh, wait, another question. Um, what's, what's your personal, oh yeah, yeah, wait, wait. Uh, Jello Enriquez, take 15. so I can just clear my head, just focus on what I'm doing. Good job. I can just put this part out. Ah, okay. Um. <laughs> this is the interview portion, and I got a couple of questions for you. Are you ready? All right. Well, first, what's your name? Do you have? <laughs> Tell them what your grade is. I already told you. And that's it, whatever. Yeah, my hobby is talking to my ex. 